Hi everybody, Angel here, and I hope you're doing great. And today I'm super excited to speak with Azure, and we will get started very soon. And I have pinned Azure's page link below, so go ahead and visit her page and follow her. And uh, we have lots to discuss today. Um, I'm super excited. We're going to talk about um, Azura's um, plant-based uh, vegan journey, some of the changes she's, she's experienced, some of the challenges she has experienced. And we will get started very soon. <laughs> We'll also talk about her approach to gardening. That's going to be very, very interesting. Also about ways that she uh, veganizes her meals. Thanks for joining. Hi, everybody. Thank you. So here we go. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm awesome. Thanks. How are you? Good. Let me try awesome. to get this camera adjusted just a little. No worries. No worries. I want to thank everybody who's joining either live on the replay. I have pinned Azure's um, page down below. Please visit her and follow her. Now, first of all, I need to make sure. Um, please tell us how to pronounce your name. Azure, you're saying it properly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I'm always very, you know, a little bit uh, just want to focus on that. So yeah. thank you so much. Thanks to everybody who's joining. Please put your questions and comments down below for Azure, and she'll be happy to answer as we go along. We'll pause here and there to pick up your questions. You can either use the little question mark icon, or you can just put them in the comments, and I will find them and, um, and uh, have uh, Azure share with us her thoughts on your questions. So thank you so much, Azura, for accepting to come on and speak with us today. Um, I've been following you for a while, and I really enjoy your energy and everything that you're putting out there. Um, you're very multifaceted and, and very talented. And so I want to thank you for, you know, um, sharing your gifts with the world. Thank and, you. Um, and uh, you know, and thank you so much for coming on. So I'm just going to jump right in because I have a lot of questions for you and maybe some <laughs> others do too. So please don't be shy in the comments. Please um, put your questions down below. So Azura, my first question for you is, how did you start your plant-based vegan journey and how did you end up to where you are today, please? Okay, so I started, uh, I started back in 2017 um, and I started, my mom had had a massive heart attack at the age of 60. She passed away. It was sudden. It was unexpected. And I say that, but I also say that to say unexpected in the sense of you don't expect your mom to pass at the age of 60. But when you look at family history of health um, and you think about the lifestyle that someone's living, it should not have been unexpected to see those kind of um, results. So that was devastating. And um, I started looking more into ways knowing I had to change my health even more drastically. I had already um, been pescatarian uh, since like 2009. Mm -hmm. And I did have a time in between then where I went back to eating meat for like a year, but I immediately mm -hmm. went back to pescatarian. My mom passed in 2016. And then um, in 2017, uh, my sister had watched What the Health and she told me, she told me about it. So I went, I watched it and that I immediately, like I watched it and I immediately went from pescatarian to vegan. So I, I don't really consider it an overnight thing because I had been plant-based for so long. And even as a pescatarian, I had, I was only eating seafood like once or twice a month, if that. So it wasn't like I was having seafood all the time. Um, and plus I had already cut out dairy because I was having lots of issues with allergy, asthma, um, and eczema, things like that. So my provider had already recommended that I take dairy out. So I was just pretty much heavily plant-based. So transitioning was a lot easier. So I always tell people, um, make your journey your own because your transition may look different than somebody else's. Some people do have that, you know, give it all up type of personality where they can do it overnight. And, and sometimes you have an urgency where you need to do that overnight. Um, and so once I, but once I saw what the health that 
pushed me into, okay, girl, th there's no more time to play games. You got to do this thing. So. Wow. Well, oh my gosh, you've said so much there. Um, first of all, I'm so sorry about your mother, my condolences and thank you you know, my deepest sympathies for, you know, everything that you all went through. And of course, everything she went through. And sometimes it, it is these, uh, you know, very personal um, experiences that, you know, really prompt us to, um, you know, take, you know, take it up, take it up a notch and evolve. And I can relate to so much you've said, because um, I was vegetarian, pescatarian for over 20 years before I went vegan. And um, like yourself, you know, I kind of called it, lactose intolerance but personally i don't think humans are supposed to okay. consume what we yeah. call lactose <laughs> because you know that's right. yeah that you know that th those foods well the milk is really for the baby of the mother who is you know being forced to give up her milk so that's you know of course my perspective on this has evolved over the years but I, I, as you were doing i was avoiding dairy and then eggs used to give me terrible indigestion terrible odors would come out of my body which i cannot even explain yeah. and very very embarrassing and um and i had found out about mercury in uh seafood and i was like well i guess i, I guess i need to lay off of that <laughs> yeah because i didn't know anything about you know the animal situation yeah. at that point and i was like oh my gosh well i guess i'm not going to be eating you know seafood but in my head i thought well wild salmon that must be healthy because it's wild so i'll eat that periodically yeah. and even that i you know i would just like eat it when it was like a special occasion or whatever so i can definitely understand uh you know yes a lot of your journey kind of the thing is like sometimes you move food out of your life and you're not sure why like for me i never eat eggs because i never like the smell of them i could never get past the smell to even eat an egg so even um like it's still funny one of my favorite recipes is my potato salad recipe but i never made potato salad with eggs so <laughs> the only thing i had to do was pretty much swap out vegan mayo and it just tastes this is amazing but um it, yeah so it is amazing like sometimes our our mind our bodies they're already giving us the cues as to why we shouldn't be having something but we don't really pay attention to those cues that it's given off always Totally. We have a comment. Um, someone is saying, Jonah Sunshine, I made almond milk daily, soaking and peeling. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he's also, he, he or she, he's saying, I've never had meat. That's awesome. That is wow. <laughs> that's, that's great. So tell us, please, um, as you are um, a bit about some of the changes that you experienced along your plant based vegan journey. Yes. So, um, when so right before I made the transition even back to pescatarian when I took that year and I was eating meat again we had moved my husband is in the military we had moved to South Korea and we were living there for two years and I was like oh while I'm here I'm gonna I want to try some of the things so I decided to add meat back to my life but when I added meat back to my life I started developing all these illnesses including gaining 30 pounds so I gained 30 pounds in that year I developed asthma. I developed eczema. Um, my anxiety was through the roof. Now, my anxiety was probably through the roof because of the asthma and the eczema. The eczema was um, so bad that when I would wash my hands, they would burn. They would be on fire. So I was taking steroids, using steroid creams, all types of medication for the the asthma, the anxiety, and the, the eczema. Um, so my doctor in Korea is the one who recommended that I cut out dairy. So I cut out dairy. I was still having these issues. And I was like, that is not helping me. So um, at that time, I was like, well, let me go back to pescatarian. But I still wasn't equating the newfound illnesses to the fact that I was eating meat. Uh -huh. um, so I, I was just like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's age. Maybe it's environment. I don't know. So fast forward. I, when I switched to the um, whole foods, plant-based, vegan way of life, I'm telling you, so I went, I went to vegan in August of 2017, and my last asthma attack was September of 2017. So I have not had an asthma attack. So, and, and it's amazing. Now, everybody's body responds differently. You may not have your healing as quickly, um, and I do still have have flare-ups here and there when season changes so I have to be more mindful about eating even more higher on the whole food and clean scale but when I say no more asthma attacks that is huge so um and yeah since so like a month after going vegan was the last time I had an asthma attack I, I and I can't owe it to anything other than changing my diet
And so that's like what that is beautiful. No more steroid creams, no more anxiety, none of that. All all of that is gone. And I do attribute it to cutting out eating animals because think about, you know, and that's the thing too. Like I went vegan for my health. I went plant-based for my health. Um, but as you're on this journey, you start to recognize that it's, it's more than just you. And you start to recognize when you watch those videos of how the animals are treated, that's anxiety. You're eating in fear. Like, like those animals are in fear when they're getting murdered for us to eat them. And you're eating those feelings. And if you're eating the anxiety and the stress and the dep all those things we're consuming, like, I don't see how we couldn't have those same anxieties in us. So, I, I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm just saying from experience, it, it, I mean, I think it adds up to something. I don't think there's nothing there. I think it's something there and we have to pay attention to that. Wow. I am so happy you kind of took us through, you know, these details because, um, uh, you know, I think, I think also what you're, and I'm so glad you talked about the animals and the suffering because it's true. Like myself, I thought it was just a diet. And then yeah. of course I started to find out more and more through documentaries, through listening and talking to people. Um, and then I also, you know, and then we find out about all the hormones. Yeah. and all the antibiotics that are you know all the drugs that these animals are given and then of course if we if we as humans consume the, consume those um you know parts of the animal we're going to be consuming what's in the flesh or what's in the yeah. in the fluids from them so that's i'm it. really glad that you brought that up because of course it's going to affect us yeah and that's it you know even one of the things you said we can't say that word still on the internet but when you, yeah, think, yeah, that one. when you think about getting injections and things, animals yeah. are already getting injections. So a lot of people that are avoiding going to get this specific yeah, injection, that, yeah. you're already mm -hmm. taking all the other injections from animals. So you have to be really mindful of, of what you're consuming because it's not just because somebody injects you directly that you're affected. If it's, if it's what you're eating has also been injected, and that's to include fruits and veggies. Like it's going to also play in a, uh, a role in how you feel and how your body responds. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks for bringing that up. Um, that's another very, very challenging element that we've had for the last three years. Um, and, uh, and it's still going on for some people, mm -hmm. these, um, you know, side effects of whatever happened with them or big decisions they have to make to try to avoid having that, you know, in them, yeah. in their bodies. Um, so it's still, it's still going on. So thank you for bringing that up. And yeah, I know we need to be careful what we say <laughs> and all of that. And, and I, I, I never say, I never say that, that particular word either. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you never know. Yeah. So now tell us about some of the challenges, please, that you may have experienced along your journey, because I think that would be helpful for people to understand that it's not all, you know, um, it's not all roses. <laughs> it's not all, you know, you have beautiful roses behind you. Uh, and I, I was thinking about that. And then I realized, oh my gosh, she has, she has roses behind her. Uh, but it's not, it's not like a walk in the park, you right. know, uh, stopping the smell of roses all the time, not for everybody That's anyway. So are there any challenges that you would like to share with us, please? Absolutely. So I guess the main thing that stands out is that I am the only plant-based a vegan person in my house. Now, um, in my family, I have my younger sister. She went plant-based vegan right around the same time I did. Um, her husband as well. My other sister is pescatarian. So we have a lot of people who are vegetarian, pescatarian, and, um, and vegan. But in my house, I am the only one that is a plant-based vegan. But guess what else? I'm the only one who, put, who cooks meals for everybody. Oh! So... <laughs> So, I mean, I had a discussion with my family. I let them know that how I felt about this was health related. And therefore, I didn't feel good as mom or wife preparing flesh for them. And everybody, now me and my husband have been married 21 years, just like any marriage, we have ups and downs. But he was on board with the fact that, okay, if you're doing this for your health, I understand it. He likes to cook. So if he wants to have animals on his plate and then he fixes them for himself but i fix everything um everything i fix is plant-based whole food it's gonna be real food i'm not gonna fix um I'm not gonna fix dead animals for you i'm not gonna buy them at the store for you so that is how i do it but if you're in a situation like that you have to number one the reason i didn't want to even cook the animal besides the fact of 
the health is because I know temptation would have been there in the beginning because I was coming from that lifestyle. So I'm like, do I really want to stand over here and cook somebody something that smells so wonderful to me? Even though at that time, the only thing was seafood was smelling so good. But I'm like, do I really want to stand over here and cook like a shrimp fettuccine? I absolutely do not. So, <laughs> so, so I had to have those conversations with my husband, have those conversations with my kids. Hey, and my kids um, at the time, the youngest one, I think he was maybe eight or nine. So he kind of, you know, they all started kind of going into the transition of having a much more healthier plant-based life. So that's the good thing too. If you are the main one cooking meals in your home, it's awesome because your family is going to be getting an abundance of good, healthy food. Um, and as long as you're feeding them good food, nobody's complaining. Nobody's like, where is the real mayo in the potato salad? <laughs> they don't even know. They don't notice. No, they nobody don't notice. They nobody no knows idea. the difference. No. And then when you think about your plate traditionally, I always like to give the tip of um, traditionally, you think of your plate and it normally is 75% or more non-animal items, you know? So so it's not a big transition to move that 25% out of the way and replace it with a uh, with a vegan protein. So those things, but that was definitely a challenge, you know, just uh, number one, finding ways to cook for them that would invite them or be inviting to and, and pleasing to their palates. Um, although I have always been a good cook, so I pat myself on the back for that. But so I was I, finding those things, though, and I definitely used mock meats for my teenagers and, and things like that to make sure they had things that reminded them of certain yeah. things. Um, so uh, it, that was a huge challenge. Um, another big challenge would uh, be getting invites to places, whether it be to a friend's function, to a restaurant restaurant you know over time i've learned to just really say no just if yeah i'm there for me to eat i'm really gonna say no i'll say oh i would love to meet you for a walk in the park i would love yeah. to meet you and we can check out one of the museums downtown oh I'll, my god we can find activities yeah. we do not have eating together so and and so it's really great i think uh for those type of situations find another activity to replace eating which is also healthy anyway so you know go for a walk go for a bike ride something where you play a card game but something and number one i think you get more intimate time when you're doing those things as opposed yeah. to sitting and eating yeah. um but um and then if you're invited to a function take some food because i'm telling you right now <laughs> you'll be over there hungry and hangry you'll be hangry <laughs> not good like y'all over here and ain't nothing over here but lettuce <laughs> Not good. Yeah. Well, I love I love lettuce, but I don't really want to. I don't want to only eat lettuce. Eat lettuce. lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th those are those are my three big challenges: like being the only person that's vegan in the family in the household, and being invited to places where there's just no choice for you for anything to eat. So you have the option, like I said, if you're invited, take a dish or two. Yeah. Or at least something that kind of is a whole meal on its own. Yeah. And if you're invited to a restaurant, research that menu, see if you can create something and you're willing to go. Or maybe just go and fellowship. Choose that as your option as well. You don't have to eat at the restaurant. You can go and fellowship, order yourself a drink and just fellowship. Or um, choose to say, hey, I do want to hang out, but maybe we can go do an activity instead. I'm so glad you said that because in my in my kind of um, hacks, right, for vegans, raw vegans, um, plant-based eaters, um, I have actually put, you know, basically to, to kind of switch the, the invitation, um, you know, you know, yes. saying no, yes, and saying, but instead, could we go yes. to, like you say, a museum, an art gallery, a, you know, theatrical <laughs> performance, a walk yes. in the park, or whatever. So I'm so glad you said that because, yes. you know, some people may think, well, wow, you know, she's really like asking for a lot here. But I mean, you're, you're <laughs> like, you asking for you know, well, a lot. You want me to come sit and watch you eat a whole meal while I eat lettuce? <laughs> no, no. And I mean, all of all of your tips are so beautiful. And, and some of them are some that I, you know, give to people too. So I'm really um, happy that you're saying that because, um, you know, you're, you're backing up what, yeah. what I try to, you know, yeah. share with people as well. Um, I also, it's so weird that you're talking about your children and your family because um, just last night I was listening to a replay of a of an interview and in summary 
um, that both of the, the people, um, the interviewee and the interviewer are, are, are parents mm -hmm. and they shared their journey similar to what you were saying. But they also talked about like some of the struggles where, for example, a teenager may try to like establish his or her um, um, identity and, um, uh, you know, um, I guess uh, strength uh, and, um, you know, what like like going against Rebel. the grain for everything. Yeah, yeah right. rebelling. And thank you. And uh, it was so interesting, you know, some of the and some of the struggles that, you know, people have like yourself. Um, uh, it was just really, really interesting. I, I could send you the link yeah. after if you want, but yeah, it was just really interesting. Uh, and and I, I applaud you for putting, you know, for putting uh, your boundaries there. And of course, you explain everything. Yeah. Um, and uh, because these two, uh, these two people actually struggle with putting boundaries. Yeah, and that's a that so, is a huge thing right there. Boundaries. Matter of fact, I shared a book about boundaries in my in my book list that you guys have to check out. But uh, boundaries is a huge thing. Even having boundaries within your family, boundaries with people you love, boundaries around your lifestyle. We need boundaries with everything, and our children need boundaries. So we need to give them the grace and space to have boundaries as well. So with my kids, they know if we go out to dinner, you can eat whatever you want. Eat whatever you want. I'm not gonna judge them. They are teenagers. They do have their own you know, their own palates. Like right, at the time I went vegan, I had three kids still at home. I have four kids all together, but I had three still in the house. Um, my daughter was already pescatarian with me and she has been pescatarian since she was in maybe fourth grade. We went to a market and she saw the animals for what they were. And she was like, mommy, I don't want to eat animals anymore. And she never did. And she's uh, 20. She'll be 21 in August. So she made that decision very young. Um, and so for her, kind of the same thing when I transitioned to vegan, uh, it was, it was no big deal to her because she was only still eating seafood very sparingly and it was right. like, whatever, no big deal. Right. My boys, um, they, the net, I guess maybe because I have always loved fruits and veggies, it, and that's the thing too, you have to look at where you're coming from and where you're going to. So, and it would be it would be kind of unfair and kind of a sense of cruelness to snatch everything away from your kids because you decide to change your diet. So um, I do understand that as a parent too, it could be a really huge challenge. Yeah. So you have to start where they are, not where you are. So meet them. And, and you know, that's why I said, like, if you want a burger, I will get you some beyond or an impossible. Yeah. If you meet yeah. low, I can make one with beyond or the impossible. Beautiful. So you can do those things, but I'm not going to make, you know, animal burgers. I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I, I really applaud you. Seriously, and, and all of the parents and you know, everyone who's out there doing this. And I started as a junk food vegan. Yeah. I was eating all kinds of, you know, vegan burgers and you know, french fries, of course, and pastries and cookies. If it said vegan, I was like, yes, please, yes, ma'am, one, <laughs> maybe even two of these, like, yes, <laughs> you know, super yummy. Yes, yes, I would love to have those. Yes. So I really applaud you. You know, a lot of some people, not a lot, but some people bash the, uh, you know, uh, mock meats, fake meats, vegan meats, etc. But, you know, it's a journey and not everyone is going to go straight to the top of the hill right away. Right. You know, so for right. some people, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. And I applaud those who are going to sprint <laughs> up the hill and up the mountain. I really do. Um, but I'm just saying, like, I can relate because I tell you, I had my fair yeah. share of vegan yes. burgers and see because i was a vegetarian pescatarian before as i mentioned earlier i was already used to having veggie burgers yes yeah yeah and absolutely. loads of french yes. fries yes and so morning you know for was me... like, I... <laughs> it was like my go-to that that morning star burger i used yeah. to go to pescatarian i'm like oh give me a morning star burger i didn't know anything about the beyond and all of that no like, they, yeah i think they're fairly recent like yeah. in my day it was it was what you're talking about and it was like amy's and uh -huh. some others you know yes. and i would just like so i was used to eating them anyway so then when i went vegan i was like all right then it says vegan burger sure sure why one not? of those you know? <laughs> Yes, exactly. I'm 100. I, I am the person who, uh, number one, no judgment. No, no. Like whatever helps you to transition away from that. And if even if you're going vegan for your health, and you say you start off as a junk food vegan because you need those things to help you transition, there is nothing wrong with that. No, I mean, and don't don't be um, afraid if some or hurt if someone. Everybody got an opinion about something. I Everyone know. Does so even about water. 
nutrition, everything. There's nothing that doesn't have an issue. Everything that has a positive, somebody has a negative for it. People complain about soy. I'm soy joy over here. I like I said, I lived in Korea for two years. Oh, that's uh, they right. eat soy all the time. I I love me some good old tofu. I love me some good old soy milk with the protein. So and then there's a you know, people say, Oh, there's a science that is gonna have the hormones that's gonna Okay, now let me tell you, I do recommend non GMO right. organic soy. Right. If it's oh, organic, good point. If, if it's organic, it already is non GMO. Remember that. Good so point. I definitely recommend that you purchase organic so uh soy organic tofu but when it comes to like somebody's going to tell you it's good somebody's going to tell you it's bad you have to decide what works for you and listen to your body because sometimes you may have a soy intolerance yes. sometimes so so if you're if you recognize you know what every time i have soy i get a headache maybe you cannot have soy exactly. <laughs> so so definitely listen to your body um and 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 god read knowledge there is so much there is so much so much information out here for y'all on the internet studies um books doctors sharing tips and so just it's out there for us we just have to go grab that information i agree i agree thank you for saying that because um you know there's no one size fits all yeah no so yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, I was going to ask you for your top tips. You have given so many top tips already. So I want to thank you for that. But is there anything else you want to add on that topic? Like for, you know, those who are considering, you know, they're plant curious, they're plant forward, or maybe they don't even know anything about plant based or vegan. And, you know, they're like, oh, now I'm hearing what she's saying, you know, what Azura is saying. And um, is there anything else you want to say on the topic of top tips Absolutely. by chance? Absolutely. So I would say when you're on social media and you're looking for people to follow, make sure the people that you're following are showing you what you're chasing. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. that means is if you're, if, and, and you can follow a mix of people. Now I follow everybody, junk food, non-junk food, follow a mix of people. <laughs> But make sure that what you're seeing mostly is what you're chasing. So if, if I'm, and I try to eat heavily raw vegan, so I follow a lot of people that are eating heavily raw vegan. So when I look on my page, on my homepage, it's flooded with salads and beautiful living raw vegan foods and juices and smoothies. That's what my page is flooded in. So it's not flooded with the junk food, the, the French fries and the burgers and the pizzas and all that. Even though y'all see, I be posting and I be sharing all that stuff. But, but it's not flooded with that. That way, when I come on Instagram, I'm not seeing, ooh, look at that juicy vegan burger. And I'm thinking, let me go make a burger mm -hmm. because I know that my goal in being whole food plant-based is to be healthy so i know i cannot eat like that all the time and but if i see it in my eyes all the time i'm gonna want it so make sure that the people that you're following they're geared to what towards what you're chasing so and, and that goes with anything um that you're doing in life if you have a goal that you're chasing then what you're seeing and what you're reading what you're researching it should all line up to that thing that are or you're gonna have a harder time it's much harder to look at a juicy burger and and fries and then go eat a salad than it is to look at a page loaded with beautiful salads and and smoothies so you know that's that's one of my hugest tips like look at because there's a lot of social media out here and we all have our favorites that we follow so just be mindful in what you're choosing to consume with your eyes and your ears <laughs> you you don't know how i mean I, let me just say i think i know how powerful it is what you just said but i mean you you have just said something that applies to so much like not just if we're going plant-based but whatever your goals are whatever your endeavors are so i really want to thank you for that um and you know you're one of the few people who's actually said that so i really want to thank you because um almost like you know like you're saying it's not just consuming through our mouths but it, right. we, we also consume through media yeah. you know through this mm -hmm. music we listen to the people we interact with etc cetera, etc cetera, the books we read and all of that so i really thank you for saying it and putting it in that perspective because yes we are on social media at the moment yeah. <laughs> so yeah. of course that's like you know so appropriate and and we can all relate because 
if if anyone's hearing or watching, there we're all on social media, right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you have a you have a hi Azure from Nicole Rache Holiday. <laughs> hi there, Nicole Rache Holiday. Good to see you again. So yeah, thank you for those tips. Now tell us, please, what are some of the ways that you veganize a traditional? standard dishes um i know you put out a lot of content a lot of beautiful content um so what, what are some of the suggestions you may have for people who are trying to figure out how to veganize some some yeah. kind of favorite um traditional food that they're used to please so, so one of the first things you want to do is really look at how you eat already um most people and this is just this just real. Most people, when we're cooking at home, first of all, are your person that cooks at home? Right. Good <laughs> so point. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna start with that. If you're not, I'm gonna tell you, uh, going into a plant based whole food diet, you're gonna want to start cooking. You're gonna want to start having some meals at home. Eating heavily raw is a great way. If you're not yeah. in heavily into cooking, you can avoid having to cook so much. It's but, easy. There, 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 there's a sorry, but there's a meme that says uh, basically a so and so. It's like a meme. It says, "Yeah, I went raw, so I don't have to cook." And, and sometimes I think that's me. That's the cheat code. I, that's the cheat code to not having to cook. Eat more raw vegan food. <laughs> yeah, because my stove in in my apartment is actually for storage. It's like a counter yeah. space, you know. <laughs> and so it's like you know, people think that's shall we say interesting yeah. but for me because i'm not using the stove yeah. you know it's just so practical like, so i don't have to cook like you're saying out. don't worry about that we don't turn that on <laughs> yeah. yeah so that is a great way number one to avoid having to cook so many meals but as far as veganizing foods uh definitely start with your favorites and like i said if you look at what you cook for your family a lot of people we rotate those same meals yes. As a mom, I, you know, before going plant-based, it was like the same thing repeatedly month after month. It's like we're rotating the same meals. We're going to have some meatloaf. We're going to have some uh, hamburgers. We're going to have some um, pizza. We're going to have spaghetti. We're going to have a fettuccine. We're, you know, those are the things that we were having. So those are the things that I was like, oh, this is what my family's used to eating. So these are the things I need to focus on veganizing. And so the good thing is you don't have to do everything from scratch. Y'all, there's so much stuff out here for us now. So the, let's say spaghetti is one of your meals. One of the beautiful things about spaghetti is you don't even have to use a mock meat in it. You add in some things like hearty mushrooms um, and you just throw in lots of hearty veggies, the, the real tomatoes and things like that. You throw those into your sauce. Now, I make my sauce from scratch, but you don't have to do that. You can make, you can buy yourself sauce that's already ready and just make sure it's hearty and loaded. And then when you put your pasta with it, you have a meal that your family's going to love and nobody's going to recognize that it is a vegan spaghetti. Right, um, right. You can add in one of the mock meats. Um, same thing uh, when you're making uh, soups and stews for the colder months. It's really easy to just load up a nice veggie soup to make curry, one of my favorite things. You know, a lot of these meals, when you look at them and we think about veganizing, it, it's not much to veganize a meal because once you pull out the animal, you're still left with every one of the other ingredients so the animal is like one part of the recipe and everything else is like oh everything else is vegan now when you're talking about a traditional item like a burger yeah. you can of course make your own black bean burger at home to make it a more whole food plant-based burger but you can also like i said transition with the with the burgers such as the garden the you know all the different brands that we have out here um so there are lots of lots of easier ways to to veganize meals now, and I think you just have to start with your favorite meals. Start with your family's favorite meals and perfect those, and you'll realize like once you do that, you'll get more confidence in, in veganizing everything else. You're like, oh, that that was easier than I thought. And next thing you know, you're like, well, let me see if I can veganize this. And I have a cookbook. You can go check it out. You're going to get tons of transitional recipes. So there's some maca meat up in there. <laughs> there's some vegan eggs up in there. But those are great for transitioning. Um, I also have an ebook for juicing. So you can uh, check that out. The links to both of those are in my bio. Um, Southern Vegan Eats is the name of the cookbook. It is on Amazon. You can purchase the Kindle download or you can purchase it for your 
um, for your hard copy to be delivered to your home. Also on Barnes and Noble, you can find it everywhere. So um, the the Juice book is an ebook, so you'll click the link and you'll get a download for that. But it, it's so many ways, y'all, for you to um, transition and transition with it. I think I think it's healthy to transition if you're coming from a sad diet, the standard American diet. If you're coming from the standard American diet, I think it's healthy for you to transition with some things that are going to keep your palate pleased. And that may include mock yeah. meats. I don't see a problem with that at all. And so um, I, I just give you kudos for transitioning. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me. I'm not, I don't bite. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. We also have a challenge coming up, me and my, my good friend, Dr. Tiana Jenkins, mm -hmm. Um, and that's coming up the end of the month. So if you're interested in that, shoot me a DM with your email and we'll put you on the list. But it's going to be a 21-day vegan challenge. So we're going to be helping people transition to a plant-based lifestyle. Uh, we're going to be teaching you all different methods when it comes to raw vegan cooking, mm -hmm. how to prepare foods and make them tasty, how to, how to save a meal if you messed it up. We're giving you all the tips. So, um, and we've both been... Uh, with a combination of over 16 years plant-based. So uh, lots and lots of great information there. So I think, I think transition is, is, it can be hard, but with the right tools, it can definitely be easier. That was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you for saying all of that. Um, and um, I was going to ask you about your, your current uh, and future products, and we're going to loop back around <laughs> to that. But I don't want to um, exclude your gardening. You yes. are showing the world how to garden. So would you please share with us, what is your approach to gardening? And what else do you want um, everyone to know about your gardening? Uh, before I do that, Black Butterfly 29 says, yes, Southern Vegan Eats is the best. And before that, we had a message from the same person, Black Butterfly 29. Hello, beauties. Well, thank you for that, yeah. Black Butterfly 29. Back to you, Azur. <laughs> Gardening, what do you want to share with us on this awesome topic? Oh, yeah. oh I, I love gardening. It is my I find so much peace in the garden. I find happiness, uh, time to think, time to, it's just, I think that if you are a person that has, that you don't have time to yourself, maybe you have kids, maybe you have a busy, busy life, finding peace in a garden is, I'm, it's unmatched. I use it as my prayer time, time to meditate, time to, you know, and you can get your kids involved if they're small, if they're big, they, they love to grow stuff too. But um, if you're nervous about gardening, you don't know what to grow, when to start, how do I, what do I do? Um, my main tip is to always start with the herb garden. Mm -hmm. Herbs are one of my favorite things to grow. They're expensive uh, to purchase. You get like you've seen in a grocery store, you get like that little sleeve of herbs for $5. I mean, herbs are beautiful. I just shared some herbs on the last live we did on Wednesday. But the beautiful thing about herbs, so many of them are perennial, which means they're going to come back for you year after year. And then they come back more beautiful and more healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like a gift that keeps on giving. Um, and the beautiful thing about that is herbs, they're the life of your food. Like they change your meals. So whether you're eating raw vegan, whether you're eating whole food plant-based, or whether you're eating animals, herbs are going to change the life of your food. So um, start with the herb garden. Uh, find yourself a nice sunny space. Most herbs love the sun. And then just make yourself a little herb garden bed and it'll be beautiful because you can just go out there and harvest. Some of my herbs, they just like thyme is one of the ones that thing, it lives like all season long. Even in the winter, I could go outside and harvest thyme. So um, it's, it's a beautiful thing, super easy. Um, I give tons and tons of tips on gardening. Um, and then when you start just kind of like with transition to vegan, when you start with something and you start to reap that benefit, it draws you in more. You're like, oh, look at my herb garden. What else can I grow? So it, it encourages you to get out there and do something more. And I also give tips on growing in small spaces, whether that be by crowd growing, because in my herb bed, I'll have to share it this week. I have tons of herbs in that herb bed and they just all kind of, when they, when they come in bloom, it's just full and colorful and beautiful. <laughs> There's tons of herbs there. Yeah. And so it's going to give you that opportunity to like grow your own food. You're going to be amazed and you'll be able to share with neighbors and friends. They can't, they won't, 
they'll be happy. They will not be mad. <laughs> I am so glad you said all of that because earlier I was thinking, you know, like even on the standard diet, it's really the herbs and spices a lot of times that make the dish what it is because very rarely are humans eating, you know, the, you know, the animal flesh directly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most of the time, you know, herbs, and spices are added so i'm really glad you said that yeah. um and you know growing in small spaces is, is super applicable to a lot of us including myself yeah. Yeah. you know and also what's beautiful too is like you're talking basically about a community that you can actually even become a part of by sharing your you know excess you know your your extras or even if it's not extra you're like you know what yes you know um maybe you know i could use i don't know you know, a pound of this or a pound of that, but you know, so and so could also benefit from half a pound or a quarter of a pound. Yeah. So I'll give so and so some of it, whatever it might be. You know, and even but, look um, into like if you're in a neighborhood, one of the tips because we we finally in our, in our neighborhood they're putting a park in our in our community, and I want to talk to someone about can we add a little garden area for the kids or for somebody, you know, because we have in our neighborhood we have the the library book stand, you know, where people can go and put their books. Yeah. On. Can we put a yeah. little garden out there? Can we put a little, can we grow like some little cucumbers, a little like uh, a little, you know, I don't know, lasagna garden, like something that the kids will be excited about. Can we add something like that? Something that's easy to maintain, but um, it's, it's so many ways you can, if you don't have the space directly in your own yard, maybe there's a, a, a community garden. A lot of places have community gardens now that you can go and be a part of that. You can help like I said, get your hands dirty and relieve some stress at the same time and then take home some yummy veggies. I mean, it's, it's an awesome way to, if you don't have the space in your home, that maybe you can find a community garden to be a part of. That's beautiful. No, thank you for saying all of that. Um, because even if a person cannot or, you know, cannot or is not ready to do it right now, you're planting seeds, you know, pun intended. Yes. You are planting <laughs> seeds here uh, for all of us, you know, to like one day, you know, get to that <laughs> level. <laughs> we got to level up here. So, you know, some of us may not be as fast with the sprint, you know, yeah. but uh, no, these are awesome, awesome suggestions. But thank you so much for that. I want to say hi to everybody here who's in the chat. Please put your questions and comments down below for Azure. Please follow Azure, uh, Southern Veganese. Please follow me. Happy whole being vegan. And while we wait for comments and questions, um, I would like for you to tell us, please, about any of your other um, current uh, products, offering services, um, events, et cetera, and anything that you may have coming in the future that you want to share at this yes. time. Yes. Okay. So every Wednesday, you guys, I do Wellness Wednesday, whole, sorry, Wholeness Wednesday with my uh, good friend, Dr. Tiana Jenkins. And just a side note to that, it is very important. One of the tips that I didn't mention, it is very important to have community in this yeah. lifestyle. So I, me and Tiana, we've never met in person, but we oh. clicked here on the internet and we talked three or four times a week. And, and we just, I mean, it's a beautiful connection that we've made, but I have several people that I talk to, whether it's, um, sometimes in just the DMs, but yeah. you need someone that's encouraging you on this journey. But me and, I, me and Dr. Tiana Jenkins, we come on every Wednesday, Wholeness Wednesdays. We share lots of tips with you guys. And I mean, it's a beautiful space for you to come join us. It's always at the same time. So that is 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 9.30 p.m. Central Standard and 10 30 p.m east coast so um but every wednesday you can jump in ask your questions some wednesdays we cook and share you share a recipe with you guys some wednesdays we share just some tips and some wednesdays we may just have a discussion but it's every single wednesday that we're on we stay on for about an hour so i think that's something you would definitely be interested in especially if you're transitioning um dr tiana jenkins is also the same one that i am hosting the 21 day um, whole foods plant-based challenge with so it's going to help you to transition into this lifestyle if you're plant-based curious if you're, you have any questions and like I said we have over 16 years combined in this lifestyle so it's going to be a great opportunity to get lots of um, helpful tips and then uh, as far as myself some things that I have out there right now like I said I have my cookbook on Amazon uh, you can find it Barnes and Noble it's Southern Vegan Eats is the title of the cookbook I'm on all social media platforms, the same name, Southern Vegan Eats. And you can also purchase the juicing uh, ebook, and that is in the link in my bio. 
Uh, this past week, we shared lots of uh, information on herbs and spices. So it's funny that we talked about that. And I shared some from my garden. So that video will come up this week. Um, and then I also have a I have a book, my favorite book list uh, on my link as well, because I think it's really important that people um, get knowledge for yourself. Like it's great to listen to everybody talk and sometimes it's real that we don't have time to sit down and read a book, but Audible, you can get, you know, go to your library, um, get a library card, and they have books that you can download and listen to audibly. You don't have to even have time to sit down and read a book. Maybe if you're in the car on a drive or going for a walk, but make sure you're getting some knowledge for yourself. So I, that is one of the um, things that I've recently added is my, my book list. And I think it's really important for people to, like I said, get that knowledge for yourself. Don't listen to what everybody has to say even though that's important but get some knowledge for yourself i agree thank you for saying that now we have a, a question from plant-based nicole roche who's asking azure what did you eat today and are you on your lunch break lol it is 12 46 azure has not had anything other than some hot lemon water some hibiscus tea Ooh. and some water <laughs> So that's a good thing. So um, I didn't I didn't mention that. Like I normally do not chew food before noon. So um, I start off my day, and it's because and that's another one of the things. Like I've never been a breakfast person. Okay. So breakfast to me has always made sense. Mm -hmm. um, even as a kid in the morning, I remember like even the smell of breakfast would make me feel nauseous. So um, I've just never been a breakfast person. So it's not my most important meal of the day. The most important meal of the day to me is just breaking my fast. So yeah, I haven't had anything to do today. I'll probably have a nice big salad. Uh, when I do, I have some kale from the garden. I have some lettuce um, in my indoor garden here. And I'll probably just chop up a bunch of leafy greens and throw on a little bit of uh, oil and vinegar, season it up and throw some herbs in there. And that's what I have to break my fast today and i'll probably have a smoothie at some point today as well so um highly raw vegan i try to eat mostly raw because that benefits my health the most do i eat cooked food absolutely do i eat junk vegan food absolutely do i eat animals never will again so <laughs> so so yeah but um yeah so that's what my day has looked like and um i um uh, i took a half a day today because it's good friday so and then and I believe in the Lord Jesus. So you know, Amen. I my, Amen. my half a day today. Um, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for that question, uh, Plant Based Nicole Arashi, and thank you for sharing. You know, um, when I first heard the concept, when I first heard the explanation that breakfast really means break fast, I was like, Psh. yeah. And I I remember. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, a few years ago, not not long ago, I mentioned this to someone and he was like, what? Yeah. You know, so what I'm trying to say is like, I'm glad that you are really taking us through, yeah. you know, some education here. And uh, we have um, a compliment uh, from abway.blogs. I love when y'all cook. I also love the consistency. Oh, there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we have another uh, comment from Plan Based Nicole Arashe. Um, let's see. I used to not eat until like one o'clock, but I can't do that anymore. I get hungry earlier than that, depending on when I wake up. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's a good thing. That's a, that's a part of listening to your body. Mm. Like, uh, the, I, I would say it's very rare that I eat, but I mean, when I tell you I never eat before noon, I it is... I can't even tell you the last time, uh, you know, sometimes when I'm on vacation, um, I went to, I went to Vegas with my sisters back in February and mm -hmm. I still didn't eat until afternoon. Cause I was just like, you know, we find things to do to get busy. And I, so I was able to stick to my routine there and, and um, I don't have, but I've been doing this for so long that I think my body is um, acclimated to just not eat until a certain time. But you have to do, if my body ever tells me, girl, you need to start eating at 10, I'm going to start eating at 10. <laughs> So, but what yeah. is also really awesome and what you shared is that you're hydrating in the oh, a.m. Yeah. hours in the morning. Absolutely. So you're actually because, you know, usually when we're asleep, we're not really, you know, chugging liquids. Right. <laughs> usually. <laughs> you know, I don't know what anybody else. But, you know, anyway, if I'm asleep, I'm not busy drinking water or whatever. <laughs> right. A smoothie or a juicer or whatever. So I think what is so beautiful about what you're doing is you are rehydrating. Yeah. your body, your essence, your energy, 
after you know fasting overnight again this whole concept of breaking the fast uh, but yes. of course you know a liquid well a liquid like water is, is not you know not considered uh, to even be like breaking a fast but what right. I really love about what you're doing is that you are you know with your 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 hibiscus tea with your drinks you know um, you're 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 rehydrating your body yes. to get you know your body ready for the day and so I think that's really beautiful and we have a um, uh, a comment from Recycled or Riches. Hi there, saying thank you. This is so me. And uh, she uh, continues to say, I'm not hungry at all in the morning. And my family always says that that is bad. No. Amen. We, so, what we, do you we, say? We trained, so, we've been trained to think, you know, a, a lot of ways that we've been trained is that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. We've also been trained that we should be eating snacks all day long. And again, I think that when you come from a certain upbringing and training, it's hard to break those those cycles. Um, like if you think about it, like when my mom was growing up, they were literally having three meals a day. There were no snacks. Even when I grew up, we weren't having snacks as kids. My mom wasn't like, go get a snack. <laughs> There was like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I I wasn't eating breakfast, so there was like break, there was no snack. Now you see, and also, and I say when I was a kid in high in school, all the way through high school, we literally in my high school where there was like seventeen hundred kids, we had three obese kids, three. That's that's a small percentage. Yeah, I'm good. I'm four, I'm forty seven, so that was in the nineties, awesome. but. You, but no still no you're there right were, there were three obese kids in our entire school of 1700 kids that's a lot of so it but that's because we were not eating all day long and so i think i think it's something to be said about that that's a reality like how often are we reaching for snacks how often are we hungry are we hungry and so i think it it, it plays a, a huge part in it so if your body is like i'm not hungry for breakfast girl i'm not hungry for breakfast <laughs> So I'm not going to eat it. So and a lot of times it is because we are not hungry. We're thirsty and we're reaching for something besides something to hydrate us. Um, we're, we're mostly water as a being. So we got to be hydrated and recognize, give your, give your body time after you have something to drink. Give your body time to recognize, oh, I was just thirsty. <laughs> That's another thing you know sometimes uh you know we think that we're hungry but we're actually thirsty so thank you for bringing that up and we have recycled the riches who says amen thank you jesus so thank you so much for your comments and your input here and uh i want to ask you uh azura what are the best ways for people to contact you for information collaboration questions comments etc please in my dm so i'm um, just slide on over there I, I am very responsive. Sometimes it gets overwhelming over there. So if you ever DM and I do not respond, I'm not ignoring you. And sometimes you'll see what well, she read it. I did read it, but also I read about 10 more. So just DM <laughs> me again and charge it to my head, not my heart, because I promise you I want to get back with you, okay? So um, always just message me again. Don't feel like you're annoying me if you had to message me twice. It is not that. It's just that I, I maybe got busy or, or whatever the case may be, but definitely I am not standoffish. I am very approachable. If you have questions for me, I'm here. Um, I love to help people. Um, I give tons and tons and tons of free information um, all the time, all the time. And, and that's because I have a heart for the community. And when I say the community, I mean the community as a whole, but I also mean black and brown people mm -hmm. because so somebody has to serve us, right? And what that looks like is we know that we're living in food deserts. We know that we're living in spaces where there are no gardens. There are no, um, there is no fresh fruit and vegetables being sold at the grocery stores. So we do need somebody who, who's in the community who's teaching us how to grow these gardens, how to start community gardens in our community so that we're not at the grocery store with only a head of lettuce and a tomato that's two weeks old. We need these things and it's real. I have lived in a food desert as an adult. Um, I, I, my first, my first house uh, that me and my husband purchased was in Baltimore, Maryland, and it was my first time experience experiencing living in a food desert where we would go to the grocery store, and I'm like, where is the produce? And so uh, I know the the realities of that, and I know that if we can just get somebody to learn how to grow and you can give them some seeds and recognize that once you grow a tomato, you got tomatoes for the rest of your life because they're gonna keep giving you seeds. I'm just saying. We, I'm here to help. 
<laughs> I'm here to help. So contact me in my here DMs. Um, and, and I promise you, I'll respond to you. And like I said, if I don't get back to you quickly, message me again, charge it through my head, not my heart. Totally. No, well, you're only one person. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't have know. a team yet. <laughs> Well, no, well, yeah, yeah. But even so, even when you have your team at the point when you want your team, you're still going to want to handle, I guess, you know, have that little touch, that yeah. personal touch on certain, yeah. you know, certain aspects. And you're only one person. So, yeah. you know, totally. Uh, we have Recycler Rich, Rich is sending you a heart. And also uh, she's saying, I drink so much water. We have Vegan Gioti saying, go vegan for justice and sustainability. And he says, awesome. And Recycling Riches is saying, if you are in LA, come to the Earth Day Summit. We would love to have you. Oh, wow. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. And she's saying, the goal of Recycling Riches is to build closed loop communities that have their own gardens and get and get rid of food deserts. Uh, and uh, ch check out Ron Finley. Oh, yeah. I follow Ron Finley, I love him. I I literally for Mother's Day one year when he came out with his master class, I asked my husband, "Can you please get me the master class because I need to see Ron Finley?" So he brought it for me that year. Simply like that, it's a hundred and some dollars, but I didn't care. I was like, I need to see this master class because, and that was my Mother's Day gift that I requested that year. Um, so yeah, I love him. Uh, he does a lot in his community, and that's what we're trying to do: get that information for to stop food deserts by putting putting gardens everywhere in these spaces where there are food deserts they don't want to feed us we can feed ourselves totally oh thank you for that our recycler riches and thank you for that azure so i want to thank everybody who chimed in uh, on the live or who's going to chime in later on the replay of course i want to thank you azure and i am going to ask you uh you know before i ask you to wrap this up and put a bow on it with your um you know final comment Fans here. Uh, so we have a comment from Recycle Riches. He is so good. Yeah, well, you know, so you guys are, are you ladies are really, you know, um, you know, helping us to level up here. So thank you for that. And so, yeah, so I want to ask you um, as your, uh, for your final thoughts, please, uh, to just wrap this up and put a bow on it for us, please. All right. So my final thoughts is start where you are. Like wherever that is, you know where you are and be accountable to yourself, but also find yourself an accountability partner. So um, somebody who is already heading in the direction that you're going and make sure that, you know, you need somebody that you can talk to that when you're having those trials in the, in the transition that you have somebody, I know I can call this person and reach out to them and they're going to give me that encouragement that I need. So, um, but start where you are. If that means you're at a sad, sad diet and you need to use some mock meat, start there, but don't delay. And if you're in a situation where you have health and you need to do an overnight transition, that's okay too. Because sometimes starting where you are means that I need something quick and instantly. I can't wait to transition. And if you are in a place where you can't wait to transition because your health says otherwise, do it. And you will not regret doing it. You will not regret doing it. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Azur, for coming and sharing with us today. Thank you, everybody who joined. And Azur, I'm going to save this to um, IGTV and my stories, and then I will message you after. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Azur. I appreciate you, too. And I appreciate all of you out there. So take good care, everybody. Bye-bye.